Apple's new iPad OS 19 update is gonna be way better than you think, making the iPad Pro finally pro again fundamentally changing the iPad as we know it. So in this video, I'm gonna discuss five major changes that we can expect to see on the iPad Pro with iPadOS 19 that'll finally make it worth it. Because I don't know if you've seen the reports yet or not, but the iPad Pro's share of total iPad sales has been going down every single year since 2021 from a high of 48% to now only 38% in 2024. And the biggest reason for that is that iPadOS simply isn't good enough to take advantage of the iPad Pro's hardware like the new M4 chip. And seeing as we're already expecting the M5 iPad Pro this fall, according to Mark Gurman, Apple absolutely needs to make iPadOS 19 a heck of a lot better or else nobody is gonna upgrade. And they're simply just gonna buy like the new iPad A16 or the iPad Air instead. And because of that, I'm confident that this is the year for iPad iPad OS 19 to make the iPad Pro great again, so let's jump right into what to expect. This past Sunday, Mark Gurman noted that iPad OS 19 will finally be more like Mac OS in three different ways productivity, multitasking, and app window management, with Apple focusing on the iPad finally operating more like a Mac. Now, this is exactly what many of us have been asking Apple to do for years now, and each year we keep getting disappointed because the updates to iPadOS just seem so lackluster, and every time Apple tries to add Mac-like features, they seem obviously tuned down to keep the iPad in a weird position where it can't fully replace a MacBook. But this year seems to finally be the year thanks to these new leaks, as well as many rumors of iOS 19 being the biggest software revamp in many years. So it would make sense that iPadOS 19 also gets a similarly massive update as well. So with that said, let's jump into the first major change productivity, which German said would be one of the ways the iPad will become more like a Mac. Now, Mark didn't give us any specific details, but my mind instantly jumps to one major Mac feature that's sorely missing from iPadOS, and that's of course, the Finder. Out of all of the features I can think of that make my Mac experience more productive, the Finder is the most important because it's sort of like a central gateway to all of your files, storage drives, apps, and everything else. It's how I do file management, transferring files between my desktop, downloads folder, documents, and SSDs. Now on the iPad, it is nowhere near as productive since you need to open multiple windows and try to navigate the Files app, which is nowhere near as convenient. So if Apple added Finder to the iPad, I feel like that by itself would likely get a wave of people going to the store and buying iPad Pros instead of choosing another MacBook. Now for change number two, we have multitasking. Now I am tired of having the same old split view for multitasking where you have to choose between preset sizes for each app, like it barely works, like it snaps back. You can't go too far to one end, otherwise it closes the other app. It is just so annoying. And then having the app switcher where you can basically switch between single apps and then split view doubles of apps like this. It just doesn't work anywhere near the way it works like on Mac OS. Like I love Launchpad on Mac OS where it keeps all of your current content the way it is and it simply adds an app on top. So if I need to open something real quick like the calculator, then I can quickly close it. Nothing gets swapped or disrupted. It works so well. And another issue that I really hate is that you cannot play multiple audio sources at the same time like you can on Mac OS. Like I love being able to listen to music on my Mac in the background, have it turned down so I can listen to let's say my video editing that I'm working on or if I'm browsing Twitter or X, I can look through different videos and choose to listen to one without anything being interrupted, which happens on iPadOS. It's just so annoying. So please, Apple, let us listen to multiple audio sources at the same time time. Now for change number three, we have app window management. Stage manager on the iPad is just not good enough. It doesn't feel like anything like you get on Mac OS. And I'm really hoping that Apple improves something because right now it's limited to only a cluster of apps per page while allowing you to switch between 
others on the fly like this, but it doesn't feel like I want it to work. I want Apple to give us no limits like we have on Mac OS. Like, of course, the hardware is there. The M4 chip is more than powerful enough. I just love being able to add however many apps on my Mac Studio with my Studio Display. If I need to, I can shrink a web page slightly to squeeze in a calculator on the other side. I can bring up temporary apps, I can close them, I can minimize stuff while having the main ones stay there in the background, just anything I want but Stage Manager. It has issue with window sizing, where the windows will sort of like snap back into place and just not let you move them, which is so annoying. So if Apple is truly gonna make iPadOS more like macOS, I don't wanna see them continue to find excuses or limited ways of doing it. Just give us the same experience and you'll make so many people happy. Now moving on to change number four, we want better display support. Now, thankfully, it has been getting better over the years, like finally being able to use full widescreen displays compared to previously having black bars on the side, which look terrible. But the problem is that you cannot run an external display at more than 60 hertz refresh rate. This is ridiculous because 120 hertz is a big deal on the iPad itself, making it feel really smooth and snappy. And the M4 chip is more than powerful enough to run many apps and games at 120 FPS, but as soon as you hook it up to an external display for a better gaming experience, you're limited to 60 hertz. And because of this, it really just shows how the iPad is just an iPad and nowhere near like a Mac replacement. Since with a Mac, you can connect any monitor with some something like 480 hertz and actually get that high of FPS, assuming you have like a high-end Mac like the M4 Max or M3 Ultra Max Studio. Heck, even the new MacBook Air for $999 can probably get 120 FPS in some casual games with no issues, but the $999 M4 iPad Pro, nope, you can't. Now finally for change number five, there are certain files and file extensions that simply will not open on the iPad, as well as not having any sort of third-party app support. Like my favorite thing about macOS is being able to download third-party apps online and install them or run them directly as apps. There's different file extensions like PKG package files, there's DMG disk image files, all of those can run open just fine on the Mac. But with iPadOS, none of those file extensions are supported whatsoever and there is no way around it. Now, obviously Apple wants to limit your use to just the App Store since they don't want to support side loading. Well, that's one of the main things that is holding iPadOS back. But once again, probably too much to ask for. But either way, those are some ways that Apple can make the iPad Pro Pro again with iPadOS 19. And if you have any specific wishes or requests, let me know down in the comment section below and definitely subscribe above for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.